Good evening, body of Christ. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. Woo, let me tell you, it's been one heck of a day. And I've been under, woo, spiritual attack. But I want to share some real powerful, uh, some real powerful thoughts in your mind tonight about how the enemy really, really works. And this is, I'm going to put it on the, on the radio as well. Um, it's going to be a two part, but, um, I don't know if I'm going to, I kind of want to try to get it all out at once, but I really don't think it's going to happen. But I really pray that God will reveal it to you the way that it was revealed to me. Because when I sat with it, like I went through something for a couple of days. The other day I had time just to sit while I was waiting for one of my clients. And my spirit took me on this journey. And it took me through the Bible. And showed me some things that um, really I needed to see for um Kind of like a prophetic word that was given to me last weekend at my pastor's church. And then um, I, we, me and Valerie did our first uh, marriage counseling. And then, you know, just the enemy. You know, the enemy doesn't like relationship. The enemy doesn't like marriage. The enemy doesn't like ministry. You know, the Bible says what well, God joins together that no one separate. Um, that's not just in marriage, but that's also in ministry and business. So a lot of times when there's an anointing, when there's a blessing, when God is bringing things together, right, because a threefold cord is not easily broken, we have to remember that the enemy is going to come and he's going to attack. So I pray that this word will, will bless you. And so remember to stay tuned after I pause the radio ministry um, for you to continue on the other ministry. Praise the Lord, this is Saved by Grace Ministries in San Francisco, bringing a word to you. The battle is real, but the thoughts are not to be meditated on. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you bless the hearer of the word, that the words coming out of my mouth will anoint the body of Christ and give them full understanding, full revelation, and full deliverance of anything that is coming against them in the name of Jesus that they may truly understand the tricks and the schemes of the devil. Heavenly Father, through this word, I ask that you anoint the ears of the hearer, anoint the mouth of the speaker, which is myself, that I too may receive a word as my brothers and sisters receive a word. In Jesus' name, amen. So, here we go. I'm going to take my time with this, so I really want you to, to, to grab a hold of this. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Now, we spoke about this, and let me tell you, we've been on this mind battle for quite some time and it's it's amazing because everything I'm preaching on for the last month maybe two months I'm being hit at like constantly being I mean it's amazing how God is revealing to me the way that the enemy works I mean I was sitting in my living room the other day just meditating on this so strongly and I, I could not believe you guys you know the, they, we, the people say we give too much um, credit to the enemy. Well, I don't look at it as giving him credit, but I look at us sometimes not, not recognizing that this dude knows what he's doing. He, he's been studying us for so long, and he's been doing this for so long. If he wasn't good at what he did and does and is still doing, then we wouldn't need to be having these sermons continuously on the battlefield of the mind. And so here we go. I'm, I'm going to break this down. Check this out. So we've talked about casting down imaginations and bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And, and I wrote this in parentheses. And I 
taken captive? Am I, no, am I, am I, are you, am I, are we taking captive the thoughts that are not lining up with the knowledge of God? Ask yourself that question. You get a thought in your head. It says, casting down all thoughts, right? And bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So that thought that's in your mind that you know is not lining up with the word of God is automatically letting you know this thought that I have is not from God. And so we're not to meditate on that thought. That's the title of the message, not to meditate on the thoughts that are not godly, the thoughts that are not spiritual. We're going to get into what we're supposed to be thinking about. But it was talking like it was so powerfully put, like are we like capturing, hold on, this ain't, this ain't biblical. Hold on, this ain't lining up with the word of God. I'm going to bring this thought into captivity. I'm not going to speak on it. I'm not going to meditate on it. I'm not going to give it no power. I'm not going to give it no life. I'm going to speak the opposite, if anything, if I have to say anything, I am not going to speak what comes in our mouth, in my mind. I was saying the other day that, you know, the old saying, six and stones may break our bones, but words will never hurt. That is a lie. It's a lie from the pit of hell. When we speak, what comes out of our mouth, it takes, a, it brings a seed into someone's life. The Bible says out of the mouth comes life or death, blessings or cursings. Sometimes the thoughts, you know, I had these thoughts bombarding my mind. And they just was bombarding me and bombarding me. And I was like, why are these thoughts hitting me so hard? It's got me depressed. It's got me tripping. It's got me out of sync. I have no peace. Lord, why? And I'm trying to figure it out. And I'm reading. I'm praying. But the, for two days, this was happening to me. And when I finally sat with God, he was showing me the enemy is bombarding your mind with thoughts that you are not supposed to be meditating on. You're supposed to be taking those thoughts captive because it ain't even about you. It ain't even about where you're going. You need to take these thoughts and cast them down to the obedience of my word. This is just the first scripture now. Look at this. After I wrote that, I am not using my shield of faith to block the darts of the devil and his demons. Now, a couple of months I did a sermon on us blocking using the shield of faith, right? And the shield of faith, right? So the enemy's throwing all these crazy thoughts into our mind. The shield of faith is to block those darts that he's throwing. It specifically says in Ephesians that the, that the shield is to block the fiery arrows of the devil. Those are the thoughts that he's throwing at us. And we have to be careful because, you know, we have to understand that when the enemy gives us a thought or, or a suggestion, because all he has is thoughts, ideas, and suggestions. If, we, if he puts something in our mind, we don't have to speak it. We don't have to give it life. And we also have to keep in our minds how is what we're going to say going to affect the other person? Or how is the other person going to receive what I say when I say it? And is this really God giving me this thought? Or is this the enemy giving me this thought? Or is this just myself? See, we tend to not... Think about the other person. And this is this battle that I was going through for these last few days. I had to stay quiet because the thoughts that were coming in my head would have affected the person that I was having them against. And I was like, no, I cannot speak this out. I got to stay in my in my fight. I got to stay in this fight and I'm not going to speak this these things that are coming to my head. But I'm literally fighting. And people don't understand that, that that's a war. You're in your mind. You're fighting a war in your mind because that's where the enemy's got you. And he's either wanting you to do something, to say something, or to go somewhere 
that is going to cause you or someone else harm. So we have to be wise enough to know, wait a minute, this isn't, this isn't God. Let me put up my shield of faith to block these fiery arrows of the, of the devil. And as you're blocking them with the shield of faith, you're taking all that junk he's throwing at you and you're bringing it down to the obedience of the word of God. And you know it is saying, God, now you got to fight back. And how do you fight back with the sword, which is the word of God? And you got to counter react those thoughts, those things that he's throwing at you. You know, body of Christ, we tend to not think sometimes before we speak. And so, you know, we have to filter what's coming into our minds before we speak it out. Because you don't know what you're going to do once you let that word out. It's going to take root. It's going to plant a seed. And then there's stuff that's going to come from it, right? So this is a battle. And I know some of you are really getting this because you're going through this. And you probably said something to your mate or to your kids or maybe even to your employer or someone at work that you know you probably shouldn't have said. You didn't really think about it. And it's caused strife. It's caused division. And when you did that, now you're paying the consequence from it. And only God can fix it. Because thank God for Romans 8, 28, that says all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. But we have to be very careful to make sure that what we're thinking is lining up with the word of God. Because now we're in a fight. Remember, words are powerful. Romans 7, 21 lines right up with all this. I'm telling you, I'm giving you what God gave me to show me the fight I was in. Romans 7, 21 through 23. Now, I took this out to Amplify Bible so you could really get the, the meat and potatoes of this word. So, I find it to be the law of my inner self that evil is present in me. The one who wants to do good, for I joyfully delight in the law of God in my inner self with my new nature. But I see a different law and rule of action in the members of my body, in its appetites and desires, because you know that the body fights against the spirit. So sometimes our mind will connect with our mouth and it has us or our body parts and it has us saying and doing things that are contrary to the word of God, even though our spiritual being knows we shouldn't be doing this. And it says it, it, uh, it's appetite waging war against the law of my mind and subduing me, get this, and making me a prisoner of the law of sin, which is within my members. So, these thoughts are coming into my head. I'm casting them down to the obedience of God's word. I know I should have speak these words, but my body and my mouth want to perform these actions, not taking into consideration the outcome of what I'm going to say or do, that's going to affect me and or the person or the situation I'm in. So I got to take this thought captive, bring it down to the obedience of Christ, pray on it, block the thoughts of the devil, and speak the word of God so I don't speak and meditate on these things that are clouding my mind. Because that's how the enemy comes. The Bible says the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So if you ain't lined up with the word of God, if you ain't studying, if you ain't realizing you're in a fight, if you're not realizing that your mind is going nuts, then you're going to speak whatever comes to your mind. Some, some um, people say other people don't have a filter on their mouth, that they don't think before they speak. And so when we know we're in a fight, you know, when I work with, um, with disabled folks that are mentally and physically challenged. And sometimes they'll tell me, I can hear them having these multiple conversations. And they're, they're being bombarded with all these thoughts and conversations from spirits that are messing with them. People think they're crazy, but this is really happening to them. And they don't know how to get delivered from that. Well, we as the body of Christ, normal people per se, 
when we get thoughts in our mind, we don't filter them. We speak them and they hurt people. And then we end up having this battle because we said or did something we shouldn't have said or done. I, I pray that you guys are really getting the concept of what I'm saying here because like I said, the battlefield is in the mind. You have to think what you're going to say or do before you do it. A thought takes a, a thought comes into your head, either from the devil or something you're listening to or something you're watching. That thought, you start to meditate on it. Once you meditate on it, you're now feeling it. Now that you're feeling it, your meditation becomes more of a reality, and you're either going to speak that out or you're going to act upon it. So you have to be very careful because if it's bad, you're going to sin. If it's good, you're going to bless. So we have to really pay attention to this. I really hope you're getting this. Because if you're not, it's okay. Because I got delivered from this as I was, I mean, it was bad. It was bad. And, you know, I have to understand that even things that are said to me, said to you, the other person may not think about how it's going to affect you or what's going to go through your thoughts. And so we have to understand the Bible says be quick to listen and slow to speak and slow to anger. That's for all of us because we have to take into reality and charge that what someone else is thinking when we say something they may have not perceived it or, their, or the enemy might be putting something in their thoughts and their emotions as you're speaking. See, we have to remember the devil, this is what he does. He really twists the word so that it, it does evil and it, it performs bad and, and it hurts the feelings and emotions and thoughts. And so there's a lot that goes with what we say. And, and I've learned, man, I got to be very diligent very careful and very slow to speak. And to hear the complete message, please go to our YouTube page at Saved by Grace Pastor Monty. I pray that this word has helped you. I pray that you will listen to the complete message so you can get a full understanding of the battle that has taken place within your mind. God bless you. So now, let's go. So remember, we got two parts going on. What we speak and how it affects somebody and what somebody else says that they don't take the time to think how it affects somebody else. Remember words, words are seeds. They're either good or they're bad. The Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so we have to be very mindful. And you know, now that I'm, I'm, I'm speaking on this, you know, a lot of us have been through different types of lifestyles, right? And in our lifestyles, things that people have said or done, they, they form things in our head. So sometimes when we speak or somebody says something to us, we tend to have a different thought that that other person may not even understand why. And it's like, well, because we're, it, it makes us think of an old situation or how we may have handled something in the past. Like me, you know, I, I mean, I was a baller. I was a brawler. I, I, you know, my life was, was gang violence. So sometimes when people say things to me, I automatically get into a stand of defense because I'm automatically thinking, okay, I got to defend myself. And sometimes, you know, we don't, people don't understand that we, it's easy for us to go into that mode because that's who we are. Even though we're delivered, saved, sanctified, and set apart for God's purpose, we're still in the flesh. And also when we speak, if we don't think about what we're saying and we just say it because we're used to saying it that way, the other person may be like, wow, why did you say it that way? Right? Because they're receiving it different. Do you really understand how powerful your mouth is? The Bible says in James chapter, I think it's two or three, it talks about the mouth how the tongue is such a flame of fire and it sets on things on fire you do more damage with your mouth than your physical being i was telling a, a man the other day i said you know when men physically hit women it's not as bad as when they verbally affect them because those words they take root in their mind and in their heart and it does more damage you may not believe it but it does 
So we have to be very careful with the words we speak. Okay, um, Galatians 5.17. This is also out the Amplified Bible. I'm really wanting you guys to get a grip on this. For the sinful nature has its desires which are opposite to the spirit. And the desires of the spirit oppose the sinful nature. For these two, the sinful nature and the spirit nature, are in direct opposition toward one another, continually in conflict. Your flesh and your holy and your spirit that's connected to the Holy Spirit, they're constantly at war because your body and your mind are used to who you used to be. That's why Romans 12, 2 says, be renewed in your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Why does it, if you think about the Bible, it talks a lot about the mind. Think about it. When the serpent came to Eve, he deceived her. A deceptive word is a lie and the truth mixed together. But how did he do it? He spoke spoke to her. How did God create the world? He spoke it into existence. Words are very powerful. Brothers and sisters, you need to really get a bar of this. You know, I, 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 I fight this battle hard, especially since I'm in the position of engaged. Because I have to constantly think, I haven't been with someone for seven years. Now that I'm engaged, I have to take into consideration the things that I say, the things that enter into my mind before I let them come out of my mouth. Because I have to think how I'm saying it to her how she's going to receive it and if it's even necessary for me to say it and is this thought that I'm having from God or is this thought that's coming in my head from the devil. So I have to filter it again. I have to take what's captive to the obedience of Christ and then the if it lines up with God, then I speak it to bring forth a good word, right? But we also have to understand that in that in your relationships, the Bible says be quick to listen. So we have to hear what the person is saying. We have to focus on what they're saying. Be quick to listen, which means we're thinking about what they're saying. And then we respond after we meditate on it for a minute. But brothers and sisters, the other person got to be the same way. Because we, we, we have to understand that we, we all see different. We all have different ways of interpreting things. We all have different ways of receiving things. So our wording is very careful because the enemy already knows the two people. So he knows how if he gets this man or this woman to say something and they say it in this fashion, how the other person is going to receive it or the thoughts that are going to run through their mind. So... Again, are we speaking godly words, pure, wholesome, loving, kind words? The Bible says, um, speak these things, meditate on these things. Things are. This is what God told me. When you think of your wife and you speak of your fiance, you, the same person, you must speak good, wholesome, loving, uplifting, edifying, encouraging words. Think on these things. It's, he told me, you think this way toward her. She's loving, she's kind, she's praiseworthy, she's honorable. He's telling me, this is how you need to think of her. This is how you need to speak to her. So when those thoughts were coming into my head, I knew those thoughts were not going to edify her, were not going to encourage her, were not going to do anything in that fashion. So I held my peace. But as I'm holding my peace, I'm in a fight. But I can't really talk about the fight. Because I'm in it and I'm not going to speak about it because I don't want to 
cause friction or pain or sorrow. You got to be mindful, men. Your women are sensitive. Your women are, are loving. They're the, they're the attributes of love and kindness that God put in them. You can't just speak or anything out your mouth. I don't even want to get into that because a lot of men would, would, would have a heart attack on that one. So, now let's look at this. I'm going to read this again. For the sinful nature has its desires, which is opposite of the spirit. And the desires of the spirit oppose the sinful nature. For these two, the sinful nature and the spiritual nature, they are in direct opposition one to another continually in conflict so that you, the spiritual person, as believers, do not always do whatever good things you want to do. So even though you want to do good, that flesh is always fighting against you. It's always putting other thoughts, other feelings, other emotions, other desires that aren't godly or spiritual into you as you're trying to do the right thing. Paul said, uh, in Romans 7, he said, um, the things that I know I should do that are good aren't the things that I do, but the things that I know are bad that I shouldn't do, these things I keep doing. Oh, wretched man am I. He, he's knowing he's in this constant battle between his flesh and his spirit. Oh my God, if you are getting a bar of this. Romans 8, 1, there it is. There is now this is what we have to understand. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit, which means that my thoughts are only spiritual, wholesome, purified, edifiable, encouraging, uplifting words because I'm spirit led. If they're not that, then they're fleshly led and these are contrary to the word of God. So I'm not walking in them. I'm not speaking them. I'm not meditating on them and I'm going to cast them down and bring them into captivity to the obedience of Christ's word. My Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, I'm getting healed, you know, just from reading this message to you. Because, you know, it was a very hard day. Um, and, you know, sometimes, I, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a change when we are different people, but sometimes our minds react to different states, right? And we have to really be mindful that even though we are in this world, we are not of this world, we still have old memory banks that still are there and they still have not just thoughts but reactions that we have had for so many years and we're transforming our minds we're transforming the way we think the way we act how we see things all these things are very important so i, I really pray that you're you're really getting the concept that words spoken and words received are they being filtered is the one speaking them filtering them the one receiving them, are they receiving them correctly? Or do they? does the other person take time out to say, I didn't receive that the way you said it, because this is what it did affected me or how I took it. And we respond, but the other person don't understand. Why did we respond that way? Because this is the way that I received it. I may not received it the way you was trying to say it, so you have to give, you have to, it has to be a give and take so that there's no division, so that there's no strife, so that there's no heaviness. Because if the other person can't talk to the other person, say, hold on, you have to meet me halfway to understand how I received what you said. And then you have to be able to understand why I took it the way I did. So again, remember, the enemy is always trying to divide. And so unless two people have a very good communication building going on then they're going to always have a division because they can't communicate and i was sharing with my fiance sometimes when i was in that battle for two days i stayed quiet not because i didn't want to talk to her not because i didn't want prayer but it was because i knew that the battle that was going on in my mind i didn't want to speak it out because it was negative but i would told her i was very grateful that she kind of caught something was going on and she prayed for me. And I told her that was the best thing she could have did because instead of 
you know, wondering, okay, why is he tripping or what's going on? She prayed for me. So she interceded for me. That's exactly what I needed. So people got to be mindful to understand that if somebody's not saying something or if somebody's going through something, the best thing to do for them is actually pray for them because they need help. That's why the Bible says, you know, to, to bear one another's burdens. Last scripture, 1 Peter 5, 14 and 15. Live as obedient children of God. Do not be conformed to the evil desires which govern you in your ignorance before you knew the requirements and transforming power of the good news regarding salvation. But like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves and all your conduct be set apart from the world by your godly character and moral courage. So we just spoke, a I'm not even going to go into the second part because the second part is just as deep, but I want you to meditate on this. I am going to share part two um, because it's very powerful and I got it from listening to a sermon today that another pastor was preaching on and I took some notes and God was revealing also to me about how these demons work, not just by speaking to us, but what's actually taking place. So Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that this message will touch, edify, encourage, and uplift the body of Christ, Heavenly Father. I pray that if anybody has spoken any words, including myself, that may have affected someone mentally, physically, spiritually, or emotionally, Lord, and relationally, that you would heal that and show the other person the understanding and revelation and also teach both parties how to learn to filter their words and make sure that their words are encouraging, uplifting, and edifiable, lining up with the Word of God. Heavenly Father, I ask for a blood covering hedge of protection around the hearers of the Word, that this is the beginning of the week, and that they will be prepared because the enemy is going to come because he has came at me for three weeks straight so hard last week about this one topic of the mind and words in the battle, Lord. So I'm asking for peace, encouragement, understanding, and uplifting. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all.